Our next speaker is uh, along the lines of, of outreach, how to get the message of critical thinking out to those that perhaps haven't absorbed it or even been exposed to it. Uh, Jeffrey Weston comes to us from Seattle, Washington, where he is a cartoonist and software engineer, interesting combination, and this morning he will discuss the communication of the skeptical point of view to a wider audience through his comic strip, which uses both humor and cuddly animals to get the point across. All right, so today, please welcome Accessible Skepticism Through Comics. Uh, so I've been a skeptic for a while, and some of my, the main influences that shape my worldview are I, when I read Michael Shermer's Why People Believe Weird Things, but also France de, France de Vol's Our Inner Ape, which taught me really, you know, a lot about how chimpanzees and bonobos act and behave and how that reflects back on, you know, how we act and behave. And so I've always been cartooning for a while, and I wanted to combine these two interests, and so I created a comic strip called Ape Not Monkey, and uh, it's, uh, the, the goal of the comic strip um, is really to sort of reach out to um, promote scientific and critical thinking beyond the, the skeptical and, and traditional atheist communities and hopefully you know, reach, uh, reach a wider audience. Um, and so how I do that is the comic strip is based on uh, characters and I really try and create fully uh, developed characters with backstories. Um, and so, for example, Toby, who's the, who's the main character, the ape, uh, he's, uh, he's sort of based off of kind of like Michael Shermer and Carl Sagan, and he's kind of, you know, and he, he, just, he just loves like discovering and, and uh, understanding science and learning about the material world. Uh, but then, you know, I have, a, I have another character who's, uh, his name is Pastor Bear, and he is, uh, he's a Christian, and his, his background is that he just really loves Christianity, and the, the best way to explain it is is he just thinks it's a really good thing, and the best way I can explain it is like if you've ever listened to you know a song or or a new band, and you're just like this is just the greatest song I've ever heard, and you want to share it with all your friends, you know that's his motivation to want to share that stuff. Um, so that's sort of where he gets you know his motivation to 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 go around and do things. Um, there's other characters, so Wilbur, he's a dog, and he, uh, coming from Seattle, he's kind of more like a, a sort of into spirituality and environmentalism and sort of, sort of the leftist kind of um, view of, of, of that world. Um, but there's other characters as well, so there's, uh, there's Clemens, who's a, who's a monkey, and he's kind of like the Christopher Hitchens, you know, he's, he's, he's sort of the, uh, he's, he'll never convince anybody, he'll never convert anybody. Um, but he goes around and causes trouble and, and you know, like Chris Richens, you know, he's probably not going to convince a lot of people, but you're kind of like rooting for him, you know, like, yeah, you know. Um, and, uh, but the one thing I love about skepticism, there's so many different topics to explore. And so uh, conspiracy theories is, is, a, is an interest of mine. And so I created a character named Arlen, um, and he's sort of based off of uh, Alex Jones, who's a right-wing uh, radio host. He's act Alex actually has gotten really popular in the last year or so. And so Arlen believes in everything, all the, you know, Illuminati, New World Order, eugenics, fluoridation in the water, all that stuff. Um, and he, again, his motivation is, is really good. He really, uh, from his point of view, he, he, he wants to warn people about this stuff. This is how he sees the world and he wants to tell people about it and warn them about it. And that's sort of where he comes that's where his worldview and motivation comes from. Uh, but then there are, then, then there is kind of the bad guy. There's, there's sort of the con artist. Uh, he's, uh, his name is HR, kind of based off of HR Halderman. I'm a bit of a Watergate Nixon buff. And, uh, and so he's kind of like, he's actually a skeptic, but he kind of uses his skeptical powers for bad. So he tries to make money and do long cons and, and sort of like, Kind of think Paul Newman and Robert Redford in The Sting is kind of his, or kind of his heroes, sort of heroes and inspiration. Uh, and so yeah, so like he'll go and dress up as psychics, you know, as a psychic and try and and, and get people's money out of uh, uh, by doing like seances and things like that. Um, and so like alternative medicine is covered, you know, in in the comic strip with the different topics. Uh, there's a character who's, uh, who's a pig and he's, uh, he's really into alternative medicine and homeopathy and he got really depressed after Andrew Wakefield's you know, paper got retracted and so he was going to commit suicide because he's into homeopathy, it didn't quite work because he used 
homeopathic sleeping pills. Uh, so organic food is uh, sort of another other topic. So Wilbray, uh, he's he's uh, the dog. He's sort of the leftist, so he's really big into organic food and whole foods. And so there's lots of areas to sort of explore in that. As to like, you know, there's a lot of misconceptions around around that area too. Um, and so sometimes there's celebrities that'll stop by. So a couple years ago, uh, if you remember, there was sort of controversy around Bill Maher receiving the Richard Dawkins Award. So Bill Maher Marmoset came to the zoo, and so. You had a character who was a really, you know, uh, uh, you know, a strong atheist, but he, but you know, he has these other views that don't don't quite match up with the skeptical viewpoint. And uh, Joel Olstein, um, who who I find kind of interesting because he gets flack from both sides. He he gets flack from the right wing because he doesn't put enough Bible quotes in his in his uh, um, in his sermons, and he gets and he gets flack from the skeptical and religious communities for his prosperity gospel um, world point. Uh, so uh, holidays. So Halloween is a fun time, you know, in the comic strip where the characters dress up as what they think would be the most scary thing they can do. So, so Arlen, the conspiracy theorist, dresses up as the Federal Reserve, the most, you know, the most evil institution that you know you could come up with for conspiracy theorists. Uh, you know, the the pig dresses up as a vaccine, and then you've got Wilbur, who is who, uh, you know, dressed up as a genetically modified food. Uh, Valentine's Day, I like to do Valentine's Day cards, you know, as well, you know, so I think that's true. That's true, right? <laughs> um, and so, but uh, one of the other things I do is I, I really like doing, you know, research and, and so this comic strip gives me, a, a, um, you know, an outlet to uh, sort of uh, understand, learn about new, learn about new topics. So this was an example where um, Deepak Chopra was talking a lot about his quantum mind and trying to use quantum mechanics to explain certain things, how the brain works and so how they link up to the universe. So I, I worked to sort of create a longer type of comic strip that works to try and explain what Deepak Chopra's worldview is and then try and show here's how it doesn't quite actually, you know, work. Um, and so there's a character, his name is Deepak Chopra. Um, <laughs> Quack because he's a duck. That's why. And and so the comic strip goes to try and you know really uh, try and explain the difference between quantum mechanics and classical mechanics and why that matters in, in explaining how the how the brain works. Um, and so you know another example was I read uh, Martin Gardner's Fads and Fallacies and I was really interested in he you know he did a chapter on Dianetics. And it was really interesting. I thought it was interesting because the book was published in 1952, and so he sort of just explained and, and sort of debunked what Dianetics was right before you know the whole Church of Scientology actually started. And so there's a lot of I mean there's a lot of stuff out there now about how the church is and works. But I just thought it was so interesting that he just went debunked you know sort of the origin of. Scientology, and then was that was it? That's all you need to do, right? Everything else afterwards is, and so, and so I did sort of like a comic strip where I kind of call it Ape Not Monkey Theater, where the where the animals sort of dress up as characters and they sort of explain uh, and they sort of tell the story of the early days of Scientology and um, you know and what happened there, and again sort of ex trying to explain you know through graphics what were the claims being made and why they they don't quite make sense or what what were the, some of the um, uh, uh, sketchy events in the history of that of the early days uh, uh, of that you know religion um, and again like conspiracy theories so I, when I try and tell the longer stories I really try and think about a human character and I find some sort of interesting story to tell there rather than just straight you know uh, you know um, conspiracy theory versus just the science I try and put some human yeah, human face on it. And I thought the story of Stephen E. Jones was really interesting. He was, by my accounts, from what I could tell, you know, a respectable, a respectable, uh, respectable, I forget, uh, <laughs> physicist who, uh, uh, who actually did, you know, who did some, my understanding, you know, decent work. He was an early skeptic of the Fleshman Ponds, cold fusion stuff. Um, and then he got into the whole 9-11 truther conspiracy movement. And uh, I just thought that was a really interesting 
you know, story of how someone who, who had a career sort of goes down this different path. And so I tell sort of that story, but then it gives me a chance to go in and explain, and, and his, fo his main focus is on World Trade Center 7, and so it gave me a chance to go in and try and explain, well, here's how he thinks World Trade Center 7 fell, and here's actually what the, the NIST report actually explains, and here, which is, and it's, it's, it's actually sort of really complicated. It, was, it took NIST years to, to do the research to figure out just how this building collapsed. Um, but, you know, trying to explain that to a wider audience to say, you know, here, here's kind of, you know, the structural engineering way of how the building collapsed and if more people can just kind of have a sort of understanding of that, uh, that viewpoint, then, you know, if that's sort of the first point that they see is the scientific reasons for collapsing rather than the conspiracy reasons, you know, hopefully we can, uh, hopefully that can just get people more on the right track. Um, and then the, I mean, the last case was, um, I, the, other, the other interesting story I, I saw was there was two really, really popular books um, about near-death experiences. One, you know, New York Times bestseller, one was about a child who, uh, who um, he, had, uh, he had an appendectomy and he, he claims to have gone to heaven and his, and his uh, father who was a pastor of the church wrote a book about it, you know, about what the, what the child says and that was a big you know, uh, bestseller. And but then also on the other side you have Evan Alexander who's a, who's a neurosurgeon who also claims to have gone to heaven. And so in my comic strip I could tell sort of two different stories. I could tell the story from, a, you know, a child who thinks that they went to heaven and a very um, non-critically thinking, you know, uh, person who, who sort of just believes kind of what they say and tries to, tries to take their vague try to find patterns in their sort of vague statements to, to establish that as fact. And then Evan Alexander, you know, was an interesting story because he, he tried to explain, you know, his near-death experience, uh, you know, using his scientific background. And so it, it goes on to explain, you know, here's what he believed, here's what he thought happened, and then here's some viewpoints of what could actually have happened. Um, and actually there was just really, a really interesting Esquire article that goes into deeper uh, the backstory of, of Dr. Alexander, which was quite interesting. Um, so I, I'm pretty much uh, terrible at marketing. I don't. Uh, I, I really just kind of work in my hole and put put the comic strip out there, and so it really only spreads through word of mouth uh, or people telling each other about it. Um, but I get a lot of new hits and new users. Um, you know, proportionally, and uh, you know, so there's some. So in terms of like, so I was I was shocked to find out that you know it was on it was on one day it was like on the front page of Reddit, um, and uh, it I, I think probably I don't know for 15 minutes I don't know how long things last on Reddit, and so a colleague at work was like, hey, your comics on Reddit, and I was like, great, what's a Reddit, and then <laughs> and then I found out, and I was very excited about that. Um, and then, actually, just recently, just a couple of weeks ago, I got an email from a, um, he's like a management consultant, and he wanted to use my comic strip, uh, this particular strip, because he, he, he does management consulting for Christian business owners, and he wants to, wants to help Christian business owners sort of follow Christian business principles from the Bible. In some way, and 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 he, uh, you know, and he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this newsletter, and it's going to go out to a whole bunch of pastors, you know, around the country. Can I use your comic strip in my newsletter? And I said, Yes, sure, you can. You do, sir, can you know? And so, to me, that's really that. To me, that's that's kind of rewarding, where somebody who has a completely different viewpoint from me can can at least pick up or or find some humor, you know, in in the stuff that I create. Um, and so yeah, so that's the comic strip. So yeah, it's Ape Not Monkey, ApeNotMonkey.com. You know, and I'm on Twitter as well. And uh, uh, I got to figure out how to what the next comic is going to be for Monday because I haven't done it yet. So we'll figure that out. So awesome! Thanks a lot. Any questions for uh, Jeffrey? Oh. Uh, just real quick, uh, how many uh, strips do you have, and how often do you update? Um, so I've been doing. I don't know, I've got a couple hundred at least. And then, so, and I, I try and update three times a week. Yeah, so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Yep.
Any other questions? Uh, what's oh, your Twitter handle? The Twitter handle is 8notmonkey. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, do you plan to put it in a printed form or compile it in like a book or something? Um, yeah, that's, I, I have that idea. Unfortunately, my terrible marketing skills have yet to <laughs> figure it out. But I, I eventually want to try and get them into a compendium in some way for people to download or, or look at, yeah. yeah. All right, well, if there's no more questions, thank you very much.